Mars or Moon Colony? One choice dooms humanity. The Moon seems like the obvious choice. It's only three days away from Earth, so if your space toilet breaks, help can actually arrive. Plus, that low gravity means you could jump about six times higher than normal. Imagine the Olympics there. But Mars is where it gets wild. A day on Mars is almost exactly like Earth, 24 hours and 37 minutes. Mars has seasons, polar ice caps, and enough gravity that your bones won't turn to mush. It's basically Earth's weird cousin who moved to the desert. But Mars has something the moon will never have, an atmosphere. It's thin and mostly carbon dioxide, but that air can be turned into rocket fuel and oxygen with the right tech. And while it won't stop deadly space radiation on its own, it does offer some protection, especially if you build your habitat underground or cover it with Martian soil. But NASA's betting on the moon first, then Mars. They're using the moon as a practice run for the real prize. Think of the moon like learning to drive in an empty parking lot before hitting the highway. It's close, relatively safe, and if you crash, you're not stranded for years. The moon's biggest advantage is what scientists call rapid iteration. You can test technologies, fail fast, and fix problems without committing to a multi-year journey. NASA's Artemis program is basically using the moon as a massive beta test for Mars technology. And that low gravity I mentioned, it's not all fun and games. Sure, you could jump like Superman, but your muscles would start wasting away in weeks. It's like being on permanent bed rest. Without exercise, astronauts on the International Space Station can lose up to 20% of their muscle mass over several months. But here's where the moon gets interesting for long-term survival. The lunar south pole has permanently shadowed craters filled with water ice. We're talking about billions of tons of water that's been sitting there for millions of years, like nature's own deep freezer. But Mars might be our species insurance policy. The red planet isn't just another planet, it's Earth 2.0 in training. Picture this, you wake up on Mars and your day feels almost normal. The sun rises and sets in roughly the same rhythm you're used to. You have actual seasons, just like Earth, because Mars tilts on its axis at almost the same angle. Winter, spring, summer, fall, they're all there, just twice as long. A year on Mars is 687 Earth days. So if you're 25 when you leave Earth, you'd only have 13 Martian birthdays by the time you're 50. Talk about anti-aging. That atmosphere I mentioned earlier? It's mostly carbon dioxide, which sounds useless, right? Wrong. This is where Mars becomes a game changer. That CO2 can be split into oxygen for breathing and carbon monoxide for rocket fuel. It's like having a gas station and oxygen bar built right into the planet. NASA's MOXIE experiment on the Perseverance rover already proved this works. This little device, about the size of a toaster, successfully created oxygen from Martian air. Scale that up, and you've got everything you need to not just survive on Mars, but to come home. As for the radiation protection, Mars' atmosphere is thin, about 1% of Earth's. It doesn't block all radiation, but it's far better than the Moon's total vacuum, offering at least some natural shielding. But let's get real for a minute about what space agencies don't advertise in their glossy promotional videos. On the Moon, dust is your enemy. Not regular dust, but razor-sharp, microscopic glass particles that stick to everything through electrostatic charge. This stuff destroyed Apollo equipment and would be a nightmare for long-term habitation. Imagine trying to keep solar panels clean when razor-sharp dust clings to every surface and creeps into your gear after every moonwalk. And Mars? Ever wondered why all our Mars rovers look like they're covered in rust? That's because Mars literally is rusty. The entire planet is covered in iron oxide dust so fine it can penetrate seals and damage equipment. Plus, dust storms on Mars can last for months and cover the entire planet. But here's the psychological challenge nobody talks about. Isolation. On the moon, Earth is right there in the sky, a beautiful blue marble reminding you of home. On Mars, Earth looks like just another star, some psychologists speculate this could lead to Earth out-of-view phenomenon, 
a sense of isolation or existential unease unique to deep space travel. The closest thing we have to this experience happened during the Apollo 8 mission. When the astronauts went around the far side of the moon, they lost all contact with Earth for the first time in human history. Commander Frank Borman later described it as the most alone any humans had ever been. So here's what's really happening behind the scenes at NASA and other space agencies. The Moon First strategy isn't just about practice, it's about economics and politics. Many experts estimate a permanent Moon base could cost dramatically less than a Mars colony, potentially by a factor of 10. But here's the twist. Private companies like SpaceX are flipping this script. Elon Musk has openly said that Mars is the priority and the Moon is just a distraction, though SpaceX is still contracted for NASA's Artemis missions to the Moon. Some scientists believe the Moon could be more valuable than Mars due to helium-3, a rare isotope that might one day revolutionize clean fusion energy if we can figure out how to use it. This rare isotope, practically non-existent on Earth, is embedded across the Moon's surface, deposited by billions of years of solar wind. So, what's the verdict? The Moon wins for practicality and economics. It's our training ground, our stepping stone, and possibly, one day, a key player in our clean energy future. But Mars wins for long-term species survival. It's the only place in our solar system where humans could potentially become a truly self-sustaining civilization. The real answer isn't Moon versus Mars. It's Moon, then Mars. We need both. The Moon teaches us how to live away from Earth. Mars teaches us how to become a spacefaring species. But here's my question for you. If you had to choose right now, today, to spend the rest of your life on either the Moon or Mars, which would you pick? And more importantly, why? Because ultimately, this isn't just about space exploration. It's about what kind of future we want for humanity. Are we Earth-bound creatures who occasionally visit other worlds, or are we destined to become citizens of the solar system? What if I told you that while we're arguing about Mars versus the Moon, there's another world that might beat them both? We explored this mind-bending possibility in our video titled Should We Go to Titan Instead of Mars? Where we discovered that Saturn's largest moon might actually be humanity's ultimate destination. Mars as the short-term goal, Titan as the end game. Trust me, after watching that, you'll never look at our solar system the same way again. I've linked that video in the description below and it should be popping up on the right side of your screen right now. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button because we're just getting started on this journey to the stars.